Good day everyone! I am Teacher Jocelyn Kalimag of Katagaman National High School. In this video, I am going to discuss the Central Limit Theorem. And at the end of the lesson, you will be able to illustrate the Central Limit Theorem and define the sampling distribution of the sample mean using the Central Limit Theorem. What is Central Limit Theorem? The Central Limit Theorem states that as the sample size becomes bigger, the sampling distribution of the sample mean can be approximated by a normal probability distribution. The sampling distribution of the sample means taken with replacement from population denoted as capital letter N with a population mean denoted as mu and variance denoted as sigma will approach a normal distribution according to the central limit theorem. This implies that if a random sample of size n is drawn from a population with mean and variance and n is chosen large enough, then the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normally distributed with mean and variance. This theorem says that regardless of the distribution of the population from which a sample is taken, we can choose a sufficiently large n so that the resulting sampling distribution will approach a normal distribution. Let us recall, a sampling distribution of sample means is a frequency distribution using the means computed from all possible random samples of a specific size taken from a population. It is also called as probability distribution. The central limit theorem is important in statistics because it allows us to safely assume that the sampling distribution of the mean will be normal in most cases. Again, central limit theorem is important because it teaches researchers to use a limited sample to make intelligent and accurate conclusions about a greater population. It also justifies the use of normal curve methods for a wide range of problems. Central limit theorem is applicable for a sufficiently large sample sizes, where n is greater than or equal to 30. This means that n is greater than or equal to 30 is large enough for the sampling distribution of the mean to be approximately normal. In central limit theorem, when computing for z value, you are going to use the formula. z equals x bar minus mu all over sigma over square root of n where x bar is the sample mean, mu is the population mean, sigma is the population standard deviation, and n is the sample size. To better understand the concept of the central limit theorem, let us have example number one. The problem is, Assume that the variable is normally distributed. The average time it takes a group of senior high school students to complete a certain examination is 46.2 minutes, while the standard deviation is 8 minutes. If 50 randomly selected senior high school students take the examination, what is the probability that the mean time it takes the group to complete the test will be less than 43 minutes? 
Let us now solve the given problem. So there are steps to follow in solving this kind of problem. So for the solution, we have step one, identify the given in the problem. So what are the given in the problem? First, we have 46.2 minutes. And 46.2 minutes is our population mean or our mu. Why? Because it is the average of the group of senior high school students. Next is we have the standard deviation or sigma, which is 8 minutes. Then we have 50, wherein 50 is our sample size. It is the selected senior high school students. And we have the sample mean or the X bar, which is 43 minutes. So the given in the problem are the following. Population mean, which is 46.2 minutes. Standard deviation, which is 8 minutes. Sample size, 50 students. And our sample mean is 43 minutes. Next step. Use the formula to find the Z score. So the formula is Z equals sample mean or X bar minus population mean or mu all over standard deviation or sigma over square root of the sample size or N. So we will just substitute all the given to the formula. So substituting now all the given to the formula, we have now Z equals our X bar, which is 43, minus mu, which is 46.2, all over the standard deviation, which is 8, over square root of our sample size, which is 50. So solving now for Z, we have 43 minus 46.2 is equal to negative 3.2 over 8 divided by square root of 50 is equal to 1.13. Simplifying it further, negative 3.2 over 1.13 is equal to negative 2.83. So our z-score is negative 2.83. Third step, use the Z table to look up the corresponding area of Z score you calculated in step 2. So looking onto the Z table, Z equals negative 2.83 has a corresponding area of 0 0.4977. For the last step, Draw a graph and plot this score and its corresponding area. Then, shade the part that you're looking for to find the probability. So the graph is a normal curve. Let's plot the z-score and its corresponding area. So z is negative 2.83. So negative 2.83 is located in between negative 2 and negative 3. So it is somewhere here. And the corresponding area is 0 0.4977. So 0 0.4977 is the area from 0 up to negative 2.83. So what are we looking for? It is, what is the probability that the mean time it takes the group to complete the test will be less than 43 minutes? It is less than 43 minutes or less than our Z negative 2.83. So since we are looking for the probability of less than negative 2.83, the shaded part will be from negative 2.83 up to negative infinity. Now let's find the probability. So in symbol, we have P of X bar is less than 43. 
P stands for the probability. X bar is the sample mean. It is equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4977. How did we get this? We all know that half of the normal curve is 0.5. Since we are just looking for the probability of the shaded part, we need to subtract 0 0.4977 to 0 0.5. So, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4977 is equal to 0 0.0023. And this decimal must be converted into percentage. So, to convert this decimal into percentage, just move the decimal point twice to the right. So, we have now 0.23%. Therefore, the probability that a randomly selected 50 senior high school students will complete the examination in less than 43 minutes is 0.23%. Let's solve example number two. The problem is, during this time of pandemic, a certain group of welfare recipients receives cash benefits of 1,100 pesos per week with a standard deviation of 200 pesos. If a random sample of 25 is taken, what is the probability that their mean benefit is greater than 1,200 pesos per week? Now let us solve. So for the solution, our first step is to identify the given in the problem. So what are the given in the problem? We have 1,100 pesos, which is our population mean, or in symbol, it is our mu. Then we have the standard deviation, which is 200 pesos, or in symbol, it is sigma. Then we have the sample size, which is 25. In symbol, it is our N. And the sample mean is 1,200 pesos. Or in symbol, we have X bar. So the given in the problem are the following. Our mu or population mean, which is 1,100 pesos. Our sigma or standard deviation, which is 200 pesos. And our sample size or N is 25. And our sample mean or X bar is 1,200 pesos. Step 2. Use the formula to find the Z score. Our formula is... Z equals X bar minus mu all over sigma over square root of N. So let us just substitute all the given in the formula. So we have now Z equals our X bar is 1,200 pesos minus our mu which is 1,100 pesos, all over our sigma or standard deviation is 200 pesos, over square root of n, our n is 25. So using your calculator or scientific calculator, the answer will be z equals 2.5. Then we have the step 3, use the Z table to look up the corresponding area of Z score you calculated in step 2. So looking onto the Z table, Z equals 2.5 has a corresponding area of 0 0.4938. Now let's have the last step. 
draw a graph and plot the z-score and its corresponding area. Then, shade the part that you're looking for to find the probability. So from the normal curve, we will plot our z which is positive 2.5. So we all know that 2.5 is located in the midpoint of positive 2 and 3. So 2.5 is somewhere here. Then the corresponding area is 0 0.4938, which means it is the area from 0 up to positive 2.5. So we have 0 0.4938. Then what is being asked in the problem? What are we looking for? What is the probability that their mean benefit is greater than 1,200 pesos per week? Thus, the shaded part of the normal curve is from 2.5 up to positive infinity because we are looking for mean benefit which is greater than 1 2 so from 2.5 up to positive infinity is the shaded part now solving for the probability we have p of x bar is greater than 1,200. We get this from the problem, which is what is the probability that their mean benefit is greater than 1,200. So in symbol, P now is the probability. So probability of the sample mean is greater than 1,200 is equal to 0 0.5000. Where did we get this? We get 0 0.5000 because we all know that the area of the half of the normal curve is 0 0.5000. Since we are looking for the area of the shaded part only, we will subtract the 0 0.4938 from the half of the normal curve. So minus 0 0.4938. So subtracting these two, we will get 0 0.0062. And we will convert this decimal into percentage. In converting decimal into percentage, just move the decimal point twice to the right. So from this point, we move 1, 2. So it is 0.62%. So we have now 0.62%. Therefore, the probability that their mean benefit is greater than 1,200 per week is 0.62%. Percent. 